Big Dow Pacino here. This is Oz and Ends number 33. I think that's right. Hopefully it's right, so I'm going to have to correct it later on. Without fanfare, I didn't even bring out the other props like the racing figure and, and that uh, the block house or none of that or any other stuff. I decided just to get into it without no frills. I did five. Well, this is everything that I had in the last uh, show and tell. I think number 108. I think it's show and tell number 108. It's getting up there. Getting up there. A lot of numbers to remember. So without further ado, let's get into it with the main line. First, we had the Matchbox 1961 from Fort Ranchero. They no longer say what series it is. They just hoping you guess by the picture. Why well, I don't know. So I don't know if this is the cross country series or field series or what. It's got Ford on it, so I'm assuming it's the Ford series. So see now it's got a little symbol what is that supposed to mean at least tell us on the back what series it is but i'm thinking it's the ford series so i have variations of this cast and um like i said in the show and tell video it's a waste of a good casting i know Hot Wheels does it too, but Matchbox, man, this stuff looks extra cheap with the, all this plastic right here. And it's, it's colored plastic. The way it's done is as cheap as possible. I, I don't know if Mattel does that on purpose because you do know that they own Hot Wheels and Matchbox. And originally, the reason why they bought Matchbox was to eliminate the competition between... Hot Wheels and Matchbox, because Matchbox pretty much losing money anyway. Hot Wheels, they couldn't compete in the American market. And Johnny Lightning was considered like niche collecting for adults because it was beyond the price range that you would pay for a kid's toy, so... I mean, it's cool. It's got its tail lights. I like the color. It's executed, but oh well. And as always, I'm going to put that in the box. Well, I, I'm not going to put it in the box. I'll leave it up here. I may put them to the back, though. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, put them to the side, well, to the back. Next, let's uh do the Cadillac. Yeah, I might do that. I might just put them in the in the bag. The main lines in the bag. I hate to say it, but I'll stay. It's keep wrong. Uh, next we had the Hot Wheels uh Factory Five Hundred. Put this right here so that hang on. Next, we have the uh factory Hot Wheels Factory 500 series, which a lot of y'all already had. This is the one of 10 the Cadillac CTSV. And like I said, I'm not collecting all of these, I've seen most of them in the uh, store, and they didn't have headlights and tail lights. Well, the majority of them I hate did kind of. But I only got the ones with the headlights and taillights. I don't think the Viper and definitely the Shelby uh, Super Snake, they don't have headlights. And I, I think the Porsche 911 has headlights with no taillights. So I left them on the page. So it's Cadillac CTSV. Ironically, my grandfather used to have a CTSV. Now he has the XTSV. 
And I drove it. Man, that car is kind of, uh, it's kind of hard to get into for a big guy. It's similar. It's, it's the, I think it's the replacement of the CTS. Or it's above, it's more high performance than the CTS. And this is cool. It's got headlights. No, it doesn't. I thought it had headlights. It don't. So I should have left this one with eggs too. But uh, the grill is done. And it has taillights. And the badge is there. The cow like badge and all that. I don't understand. Why you took the time to do all this on the, on the back. And then just... Put a little white. You could have put silver or white on the headlights. I, I don't get it. But uh, it's good. And uh, with that said, it's going to join its, its partner. Going to join the Matchbox. Next, we have the uh, Lamborghini Huracan LP610-4 and Factory 5 again. And I think I have versions of this casting. And it has headlights and no taillights. Again, you know. I mean... This is why my thing is, if you're going to do it, do it right. And do I have, is this it? Yeah, I think this is the same, the same caster. And it don't have tail lights either, so I don't think I have. I think I tried to look for. I think this is the Mercy Lago. This is not the. Uh, oh, this is the Anaventador. Yeah, I mean, it's good for what it is, but I know I was short and kind of cold, but what's the point? I, Bentley Continental Super Sports, and I think I have versions of this casting. I don't know. I think a Continental GT. I don't know. They might. Might might have a version of this in Matchbox too, but this has headlights and tail lights. I think they were scared. Bentley probably told them, "You better do our car right, or we're gonna snatch our license." Because they used to do Lamborghini and Porsche like that, but it's like lately they started slacking on the main lines, and that's one of the reasons why Ferrari snatched their license because they didn't like the way in their opinion was inferior uh, products being made in their likeness so and they want it to be taken seriously so that's the reason why I think Tomica if they still had the license produced the license and I think a more upscale probably European die cast I, I think they let uh, American companies produce their the, the reproductions in bigger scale because they know they're going to do detail but other than that the 164 once it gets down to 164 
They don't want nobody doing their cars right now. And this is the 2012 Corvette Z06. And uh, this is something I collect Corvettes. I don't know why. I don't, I'm not going to buy one. There was a time when I thought I was going to buy one. In the early 2000s, I went to the dealership and everything. Sat in it, test drove, and it just was uncomfortable. And even though I had an uncle who had, he had the earlier model. And I, in a way, I think his was even smaller. His, his cabin may have been different, but I don't see how he did it. He was six feet tall. And I had a good friend, a co-worker I worked with. He had this, the last of this like a two early 2000s and all of green in fact i had two friends that's why it was kind of influencing my decision i wanted one for a long time though so it was either that or a mercedes-benz uh s500 and i went practical i, I go to cadillac so this is cool Tail lights, hair lights done. I have better examples, premium examples of that same model though. Something for the collection. Next, let's get to the premium part of this video. I was able to find a 64 Buick Riviera. I know some of y'all already found this Hot Wheels Boulevard series. My my store is really behind. I went pig hunting. I was hoping to find a fast wagons and target this week. No dice. I ended up finding something else that a lot some people already have. So I didn't see none of these there. I know people snatched up that Subaru. They could have had a drag bus. I don't care about that. And probably snatched up that Chevy Nova. I hope they weren't stolen. Unfortunately, in my location, Walmart, Target, i seen it at Target. I see it more at Walmart because it's a more, I shouldn't say rural, but it's a more in a community base. And it's a busier store. It's a bigger store for one thing. And it's not as well maintained as Target. Target, it's always somebody in them aisles. They're always walking. The way they're set up, they're better organized than me. Walmart is a jungle. I don't know what's wrong with Walmart. And the 64 Buick Riviera. I got them days for them folks. And it's a beautiful car, man. And I've been polishing my cars. I don't know if you can see the difference. I think you can see the difference with that black low rider. Even though it's still probably collecting dust, but oh, I'm pretty pretty good. I think I did a pretty good job. Some of the paint jobs are better than others, more qual high quality paint jobs. The uh it gleam better. I can't wait to see how this is going to look when I polish it. It's already gleaming, so. Yeah. I like this body style for some reason. Reminds me of the Black Beauty with Green Hornet, which was a, uh, a Chrysler Imperial, if I'm correct, like a 1955. I'm not, yeah, I think so. I think it was a Chrysler Imperial. It wasn't a, uh, well, yeah. This is a <clears throat> Buick. This is a GM product, but it's the same era. I guess the same design. I don't know. It might have been designed by the same person because I think this was designed, if I'm correct, by Holly Earl. If I'm correct, might be wrong. Somebody correct me. But anyway, moving on. 
It's a good addition to the collection. If I didn't tell you that this was a Hot Wheels, you wouldn't believe it. It looks like a Johnny Lightning. I'm not going to lie. They really did a good job on this. But it's car culture, so. Next, uh, we have a Johnny Lightning. And this is from the Pop Culture series, which I didn't know they had at first, but apparently they do. And this is released too. This is, they don't say how many, you usually say how many units was released, but I guess they figure it is a worldwide distribution or something like that. It might be on the other side. Though. I don't think so. It's not up there. And of course, this is what collection this was from. He got something from the other collection, another James Bond. I got the uh, 87 Aston Martin V8. I wanted the V12, even though I'm kind of disappointed by how it looks. I see it right there. It looks horrible. thought it looked better than that. And I thought it would be silver. And that's the rest. I'm more interested in these. I wish it was a Monopoly. I want to see that Lincoln Premier. And I really want an 85 Chevy Camaro. 85, 86, 87 around there. Because everyone I find either has wild uh, deco on it or it's ugly. I think I seen the one in... Uh, M2, but it had a trailer with it, so. I mean, this car is okay. I have the uh, Hot Wheels version of it. It has no opening fixtures. has a lot of detail on it that the other one doesn't have. I should have compared them, but, man. I'm trying to get this video out of the way for some reason. So he's got the headlights, the taillights. The wheels look good. Interior looks surprisingly well. And it's a Euro spec, which is always cool. Right hand drive. And I don't know if they had a special because this car is supposed to transform into a submarine. So I don't know if that if the cockpit is done like that for a reason. Super, uh, like a, um, like a plane or something. And oh, I guess it has a glass plate, place. Well, that might be the wheel well. You see that? Well, you can see. Usually don't see stuff like that. That's cool. <clears throat> So that's the Johnny Lightning Lotus East Sprint. They don't even say what year it is. I think it was like a 1980, 80-ish, 80 early 80s, early to mid 80s, when that movie came out. The Spy Who Loves Me, I think. Yeah. Uh, next, we have a Johnny, another Johnny Lightning. This is an import heat, a 1999 Mazda MX-5 Miata, 1999 Mazda MX-5. And most of these are 2020. I haven't found any 2021 stuff on the pegs yet uh surprisingly um as far as johnny white mean all green light this is what you get with this series i showed it in the last video 
and street freaks. I said before I did it incorrectly. All of these are not zingers. Just the top one is. And it's a black with flames. Imperial Crown Custom. Hmm, that might be interesting. And this is the import heat monster. It was part of the import on this. So, and the color on this is custom candy alpha red. No opening features on this. Headlights are done. Tail lights are done. The interior looks immaculate. Um, I don't. I don't like the way the wheels are black. Should have did the wheels and chrome, but maybe they have a variation. I got this from Amazon too, so. It was, it was, the price was right, so. Next, we have another Johnny Lightning. This one is something I haven't seen before on any, not anybody's channel. Maybe I've seen it. I, I don't think I've seen it, this particular model, but I know that some people uh, who collect a very small number of people, like European convertibles and stuff, like I do, older stuff, not just hyper cars and super cars and stuff like that. And this is a limited edition one of 2000. And I think this is a classic gold. And this is 2020 release three. And I said before, this is in the same uh, collection as the Ford Thunderbird I have right here. Which already picked up dust even though I, I cleaned it. Man, I had black cars, man. That's not even a real car. Um, I think I got the Country Squire too. It's a country squire here. A 66 right here. That's part of that same collection. That's still gleaming. So, let's take a look at the car. Headlights, tail lights is done. It is a right hand drive. Interior could have been a little better. I think that steering wheel is too big. Looks kind of chunky. I don't know if this is an older casting they brought back. I don't think it needs these white leather tires. It got bridge stones on it. They could have did a different wheel, but it don't look that bad. Just wish they would not have did the white leather tires. It kind of takes away from it. But I guess it's supposed to be a Martin version. And it's got stripes on it, so I guess it's a racing. I'm trying to be a little sporty. But these were no way like fat. They're lightweight, so they're fast, and it's it's probably a four speed or something like that. But um, more of a like a what they call a touring car. Even though they raced them, but the racing was different. It was not about horsepower, mainly about handling, and uh, you had to be a really good driver. That's a good addition to the collection. Something different. And last but not least, we got this hobby shop 
Series 6 from Greenlight Collectibles. Uh, it's 1967 Ford Bronco. Came with this backpack of figure, which is kind of cool. Greenlight sometimes gives you a little treat. <clears throat> uh, the most you get from Johnny Lightning is a card sometimes when they feel like it. And these figures aren't cheap. I'm trying. I'm supposed to have been buying. I've been letting it off. And I seen some in the thing that were very ugly. Not up to scale. But, um. You know, a pack of figures, I think, with just like four or five figures, would cost you, like, on the aftermarket. They're charging. I know Amazon, like, close to 14 If you're lucky, 11 or 12 And this is this series, and I think it is a 2020. No, it's 2019. But, and all you lobbies always behind, my opinion. They just have a nice inventory sometimes. But well, sometimes they suck. I hate to say it. Their stuff is overpriced. If you can find Johnny Lightning or um, Green Light at Target or Walmart, it's a whole lot cheaper. It's up to like, I think, $2 cheaper, if I remember right. In some cases, $4. Shoot, they had Auto World at Walmart. I think it was going for like, Hey, I think it was for going for like, I want to say eight, uh, eight something. I think it was about that. But you got it on eBay or Amazon, depending on what it is, you might pay up to $15 to $25, even $30 for the same car, depending on the limited edition. This has tail lights and uh, headlights. I think I have a Bronco, but it's not like this one. I think it's enclosed a little more. But this is something good for the collection. Some people are crazy about stuff like this. It's pretty good. No opening features, I don't think. No, I'm wrong. So we got... We got one car that has an opening feature. So this bad boy has an opening hood. And the hood details is not bad. So that's pretty much it, man. That's showing, t I mean, Ozzy Ants number 33. Like I always say, not the best diecast channel, but not the worst hit either. The models show a little love to the diecast or for the diecast. Uh, I want to thank the subscribers for your continued support and for the uh, random viewers. Like I always say, this is not the best diecast channel. It's not the worst either. I encourage you to hit the subscription button, hit the notification button so you have access to all the content. Until the next time, this is Big Dappuccino signing off. Oz and Ends, number 33.